In this video we're gonna learn how we can use multiple characters in Cascadeur so that we can do animations where characters can interact with each other and then we're gonna bring those separate animations into Unreal. Now, I should mention that I'm using Unreal 425 for this tutorial so keep that in mind. Uh, previous versions I don't know if it works the same way. So the first thing you want to do is if you go to fi File Open and you're gonna look for your Cascadeur sample files and if you look for your Cascadeur um, folder, go in there, look for your samples, and you should find your UE4 SK mannequin. Open that up, and the next step is going to File, Export, and we're going to export Scene, FBX and Scene, and then we can export these Scene uh, anywhere in our drive. So I'll export it as UE4 mannequin Scene, save that, and we're ready to go. So next thing, I can close this now and start with a new scene, So, or I can just go and do a new scene here. So with the empty scene and that file exported, we're going to File and we're going to Import FBX and we're going to choose Add Model. And we're going to select that scene that we just exported, which is in the FBX format. So we'll open that up, the character pops up, but it doesn't have a rig, so you can see that I have my rig selected, but the character doesn't have a rig. So the first thing I want to do is when working with multiple characters, the character Mesh will always have these two names here on the right. Okay, SK Mannequin and SK Mannequin LOD0. This is going to create an error uh, because these names are not going to change when you change the namespace that we'll have to do. So the first thing I want to do is as soon as I do this, as soon as I add the model, I want to check and say, let's say, this is going to be my A character, so I'll select A, and I'm going to come here to Mannequin and select A, press Enter, okay? So if I added a new character, I would call it B or C. For the last character, you don't actually need to do that. As long as these two names are not repeated between characters, that's fine. Now, next thing we have to do is going to File, Import, and we're going to Import Rig. And for this file, I'll leave a link in the description below to this page. So the guys at Cascadeur just recently uh, released these rig files. And if you scroll down, you'll find the SK Mannequin uh, file that I've just showed you. And this is the one you want to download. Okay, so we open that file up, wait a few seconds, and you can see that now we have a rig. Now with that rig selected, I'm going to open up my scene and you can see that in, in my scene I have track 0. So I'm just going to rename this to my character A, so char A for character. And as soon as I do that, now my character is already inside this track. So if I now hold Alt, I'm holding Alt and I'm going to double click this track, I, it selects everything, the whole character, the rig, the whole shebang gets uh, selected. So now I can go into objects and I choose change namespace. Change namespace and I'm gonna call it the same thing as I got there in my track. So char A for character A. I'm gonna press OK. Press enter. Right, so now he's got a namespace. You can see the namespace here. So everything is character A. Right? Okay, so first character is imported. I can now just um, hide him and lock him. Okay, now he's hidden and locked. And I'm gonna add a new track. So, add a new track. And this is gonna be my character B. So, character B, press OK. Select the track, okay? I'll click on it, left, left click. And I'll repeat the process. So, import, add model, same one. If you're planning to add more uh, characters, and I, I have to confess, I haven't tried more than two characters, but if you do plan to, to do that, you might want to come here and say that this is B, but because I'm only having two characters, these two, the mesh and the transform, don't need, I don't need to change the name right now, because it's different than the first one. So I, I think you, you know what I mean here, and same thing as before, import rig, same rig, and you can do this to the other, to the standard model and the other models as well, or any any characters that you create. In the reading phase, you have an export JSON file uh, option. And that's the only time that you can export the rig, is when you finish creating the rig, 
you have an export rig JSON file. And that's what you have to do for your custom characters. I'm just showing you how to do the UV4 mannequin. But in custom characters, you have to do that. Okay, so now we have this guy. And I'm going to do the same thing, the namespace thing that I did with the other one. So I'll hold Alt, double click, come to Objects, change namespace. And this is going to be my character B. Press Enter. Okay. So now we have two characters in the scene. So if I now click anywhere in the screen to deselect the whole thing, I want to reposition my characters so that I can do like um, an interaction between them. If I select my character like this and I just move it, look what happens to the um, bone structure. My root stays there and my character comes over here. It's going to work in Unreal. But when I open it up in Unreal, he's going to be here, a bit on the left, not on the center. And if in Unreal I try to remove the root motion, he's not going to pop to the center. He's going to stay like this. Okay? So if in Unreal, and I'm going to show you that in, when we get to Unreal, if I want to remove that, this root motion and make the, the character pop to the center, for, for example, if you're doing a movie, this, what I'm doing right here, just moving the character is fine. If you're doing a, a little scene, if you're planning on controlling this character and then syncing animations, uh, this is not going to work so well. Uh, the, now, a, a new plugin came out in Unreal Engine. Well, it didn't came out. It's just, um, if you're going to free, uh, free for the month, it didn't came out, it's just free right now, and it's called the Root Motion Extractor. So uh, you can use that to remove the root motion uh, and work in, in this manner that I'm just showing you, just selecting the character. But uh, if you don't want to use that plugin, let me just control Z here to undo that. Instead of moving, moving the character like that, we can come here to the rig, to the joint mode, select our character, and then move it like this to his initial position where we want to start the animation from. Okay, so this is my character B. Right, if I go into settings, I'm just, um, I'm going to move my character here to the right, and I'm going to turn on fixed angle, and it's at 90 degrees now, so that I can uh, simply go into my rotation tool and make sure that he's pointing straight to, straight in this direction, okay? Okay, now I'm going to unhide my other character. And I'll do the same thing for him. So I'll select him. Move him over here. And turn him to the other character. Okay, now I'll do a, a quick animation here. Going back to my point controller mode, I'll do a quick animation and I'll just fast forward this. Okay, that's enough. Yes, I know, it's a crappy animation. It's just... Uh, it's just to exemplify. So I, I gave some uh, movement in his root motion of this guy, uh, and this guy doesn't have it, so just to, that, so that we have something to compare. Okay, so this guy moves a little bit and the other one doesn't. Uh, I just did that. Right, okay, so we have something that we can test now. My character A is the one on the left, so if I hold Alt and double click my character A, it selects everything that my character A is, and I can go into File, Export FBX, and I'll export Scene Selected Objects, okay? And I call this my character A. Save that. For my character B, I'll do the same thing. Hold Alt, double click on the track, and I'll export him as Scene Selected Objects, and I'll call him Character B. Save. So now we have two FBX files these two okay so if I go into my Unreal I can drag and drop these two files in Unreal go into my import settings and like, and like I showed you in the other video I'll just select the mannequin here because it's the same skeleton make sure you press use default sample rate and I'll import all to import both of them with the same settings okay now we have these two animations uh, before I move on I want to show you that I had I created a different animation from uh, Cascadeur here and is this guy doing this and I created a montage so that we see the difference uh, of uh, connecting animations one with the other. So with this montage selected, and let me so go into the Acid browser. Let's first open up our two animations. And you see that where the root is, 
right there in the center of the scene. So if I was to place these guys inside of a montage, and I'll place them right there and there, these would happen, right? I'll change the route and you would go to that to that location. Now because I moved the skeleton, I'm able to come here to the animation itself. Let's go to this first one. Look for root motion. So root motion. And if I press that, it removes that root motion. Okay. I I wouldn't be able to do this if I move just the character in Cascader by selecting him like this and moving him. Okay. I actually have to select the skeleton and move the skeleton. Otherwise I won't be able to do this here in Unreal, enable root motion. So I'll save that, enable root motion, and I'll go to my other one. Do the same thing, enable root motion, save that. And now if I open up my montage, it's in the same place. All the animations come from the same place. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please uh, press the like button, subscribe, and press the bell symbol, so you get notifications of new tutorials from me. So I'll see you in the next video.